Hi guys, so as I promised, I'd make you a quick tutorial using PicMonkey. I just want to show you how to make really simple logos that have a transparent background. I know a few of you have asked for this because you want to be able to put your logo on the front of imagery and on the front of videos and that kind of thing. And obviously you can't really do that when your logo is kind of inside a big square white box um, like they are normally when you have just a kind of picture logo that you've made yourself. So I'm going to show you how using the free tool PicMonkey. I love PicMonkey because, well, I'm a complete graphics person, uh, graphics geek anyway, and I always used to use Photoshop. Um, but Photoshop takes, uh, you know, quite a bit of learning because it's so complex, whereas PicMonkey just gives you the little things you need to make cute little graphics, and it's really simple to use, and what a bargain, it's completely free, woohoo, yay, we love free stuff, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do your own simple logo, and then make it transparent so you can then stick it on the front of stuff, okay? So here we go. What you need to do is just go to PicMonkey. Now, there's been a bit of confusion I've seen uh, with people. They think, oh God, they, you try and sign up for an account and it asks you to pay. You don't need an account to use PicMonkey. You just go and use it. You only need an account if you're actually planning on upgrading to the paid version. If you're using the free version, you don't need an account at all. You literally just start using it, okay? There's no need to log in or anything like that. If you log in, you're only going to get confused because it's going to ask you for money. So don't log in. Just use it, okay? You just use it. <laughs> all right, so to start with, we're going to just, like, make a simple design. So all you need to do, you see these four icons along the top here? You just go to design, and don't worry about the size for now. Just click design, and I'll open up the big square canvas like this. You can always crop it later, so don't worry about the size or anything for now. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, put your logo in. Now, normally a logo is one of two things. It's either a graphic, like i.e. a picture, or it's what's known as a logo type, which means it's basically a font that you've chosen to be your logo, so it's just a word, or it can be a combination of both. So I'm going to just quickly make a fake logo for myself. So uh, some of you guys might have seen my free course out there called Pimp Your Chimp. So I'm going to make a logo for that course right now. Um, and I'm going to make a logo with a picture. But first of all, I'm just going to put the words in. So if you see here on the left-hand side, you've got all these icons here. They all do different things, so it's well worth having a play. You literally can't go wrong with Pink Monkey. If you make a hideous mess, then just delete it and start again just have a play it's really fun and i promise it's super addictive so you'll waste loads of time <laughs> playing with it okay so these kind of sections do different things this one's mostly about generic kind of colors and stuff then you got one here which does kind of like effects if you've ever used instagram you'll kind of recognize some of these so it just kind of puts an effect on your canvas we're not going to bother with any of these this one is more about touching up your photos, if you've got a blemish or whatever. I've never used this one myself, obviously, because I'm perfect. Haha, <laughs> not really, I just can't be bothered to learn it. And then the ones we're going to be using is mostly here, the text, and here, which is overlays, which basically means little graphic-y cute things that you can put on. So I'm going to start with text. So um, we're going to basically add a word. Now, don't worry about the fonts for now, just... Just let it select whatever it wants and add text because you can change it after you've written it. So let's imagine I'm going to make a logo for Pimp Your Chimp, which is my MailChimp course. So at the moment, obviously, it's really freaking boring. So if you highlight it, you just click in with your mouse. Uh, like Do a little double tap with your left mouse and then highlight. And then you've got all these fonts to choose from. So it's well worth doing a few logos and a few different fonts so you can see which ones you prefer. Now, Pimp Your Chimp is a bit of a cheeky title, so I'm going to look for kind of like a cheeky font for this, um, because it is a little bit cheeky, okay, so let's have a look. So you've got all these crazy ones. Some of them are a little bit gothic, some of them are really cute. Um, I think I'm going to use this one, because it's cheeky looking, so Pimp Your Chimp. Um, but again, like I say, you can, if you, if you click on it and right click, this box comes up and you can duplicate text. So you can actually do a few different versions. So I'm not sure about this font, so I'm gonna like put one in that font as well. 
Um, and again, I'm going to right click, duplicate text, and maybe I'm going to do one in a totally different font. Let's have a look. Maybe this one, because that also looks a bit cheeky. You can drag these boxes out and make if it doubles up itself like that. So let's get cracking with making a little logo. Now, I also want a little picture in here. Now, I know that in here, if you click the butterfly, you see all these shapes? Oh, there's so many different ones. Look, you can open each, each of these dialog. Oops, haha, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. You can open up all these dialog boxes and it gives you all these different shapes. Like arrows. If it says Royal with this little crown, it means you've got to pay. You've got to upgrade to the paid one, so don't try and use those if you don't have a paid account. Um, now, I know that when I did my Pimp Your Chimp course, I did use a little chimp face icon, which I got from here. And it was in Ordinary Beasts. And there he is. There's my chimp. So I'm going to imagine I'm going to do a logo like this with a chimp next to it. So I've got a kind of long logo. So I'm going to duplicate him by right-clicking and hitting the duplicate duplicate overlay option. So I'm going to put my hair there. And now what I want to do is start thinking about colours. I mean, everything comes up black, but that's really boring, right? But if you click on, you see this dialog box opens up, and you can then change colours. So I'm going to make, shall I make him a bit rad? Let's imagine I want to make him yellow and blue. Oh, God, that's hideous, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to do it now. And then I'm going to make this one the same colour blue. And if you've just changed the, the colours on one thing and you want to match, all you have to do is when you select whatever it is you're selecting, whether it's your picture or your, or your text, this dialog box opens with the colours and if you click in this weird grey sidebar, it gives you like a little dropper and then all you do is place it where you want to copy and then just place the dropper there and left click and it does it. Isn't that cool? So I'm thinking actually, you know what, this font now looks a little bit lame because it's so flat. So if I right click and duplicate again, I'm going to make this like that colour yellow. So I'm going to go for the magic thing here of getting the eyedropper and copying that yellow. And look at that. And then if I layer it on top, I get this cool kind of 3D effect. So all I've done is layered one on top of the other like that and just made it a little bit not matching. So it just gives it a 3D effect. So let's imagine now I want to keep that as my actual logo. I'm just going to make that a little bit easier to read. Just move it a little bit more. <laughs> I'm not doing very well at that, am I? That's better. So let's imagine I want to keep that as my logo, but I've got all these annoying ones in the way. So I'm just going to go here, which is called, um, which, uh, it's just a kind of weird thing. It's called basic edits. And I'm going to hit the top one, which is crop. And you see this box comes up? Well, you can move this all around. So you want to place it over your new logo. Just like that. And then hit apply over here on the left. And there you have your new logo ready. And then to make it transparent, so you can then put this on anything, you want to go to, um, hang on, no, it's in here, and it's canvas colour. And see here, there's a little box that says transparent canvas. You just tick that and apply. That's it. So again, it's just in the basic edits, canvas colour, tick the transparent box and apply. Now, the second trick to doing transparent logos is that you then have to make sure you save it as a PNG file and not a JPEG. If you save it as a JPEG, the JPEG uh, kind of format fills in the background with a white background and that's what you don't want for a transparent logo. So when we click save, you see here there's the option for JPEG or PNG, make sure you've got PNG saved. You can also change the size, this is rather large, it's 1300 pixels by 399 pixels. Now you can either save it as it is and then bring it back into PicMonkey to edit it in size because only you will know what size you need it at, okay? And in a lot of editing software you can actually change the size anyway. So if you're using Camtasia and you want to overlay your logo in Camtasia, you will actually be able to stretch it down, okay? So that won't be a problem. So you can, you can also save a few different sizes. So I'm just going to save it as it is. And I'm going to put it in my, I've got a box here for test pictures. So I'm going to call it Pimp Your Chimp Logo. 
Pick Me Ship logo test and save that beast. Oops, this is just my Mac doing this because it doesn't add the little ending. Don't know why. <laughs> I'm getting used to a Mac. Can you can you see? <laughs> and then you can also choose to save it as many times as you want in different sizes. So I'm like, well, I want a titchy one for my website, so I'm going to save it as 500 mega, uh, 500 pixels. Save it again. PYC small. And there you'll see if I show you, I've got it in there. So if I open that up, you'll see my logo and see how it's got a transparent background. There's no white box around it. And there's the bigger one. Isn't that crazy? That is obviously quite an ugly logo. <laughs> I wouldn't actually use that. I'm just making the most ridiculous ones to show you guys. <laughs> okay, so now what you can do, if we close this down, we don't need to use this anymore. Just imagine you are making a design and you've got like a photo of yours for your business. Um, so for example, I'm trying to find a picture of me somewhere. I've got loads of pictures everywhere. I still haven't organized my Mac because I was working on a PC and it died. And this is my brand new MacBook and I still haven't transferred all my stuff over. So there's stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna try and find some a crazy picture for you, if I can. Uh, where's my pictures? They're all over the place, there they are. So let's imagine I wanted to put a picture out into the world and I wanted it to have my logo on. Um, so maybe here. I'm like, right, I've got this and I wanna make sure it's kind of watermarked with my own logo. So what I would do is I'd bring my picture in there and then I would go to the butterfly and instead of selecting one of these things, there's a little button at the top so you can add your own. I'm going to select that and I'm going to go and find my logo. Da -da -da. There it is. Isn't that cool? So then it's like watermarked on your thing. And you can stretch it, you can make it small. Don't stretch it too big if you've saved it small because it will go blurry. So use the bigger one if you want a bigger one. This is why it's good to save it in several different sizes because this is a pixel based image. It's not like an illustrated image where it's done in vector. Those of you that are graphic designers will understand that. To the rest of you, it might sound like gobbledygook. Just trust me, you want to save it in a variety of sizes so you can have it big or small without it looking weird and sketchy. Okay, so you can shrink it down as much as you want because it won't pixelate. And then you can move it about however you want and that's a way to get a transparent image onto your stuff. Now, if you wanted to do that in... Um, in Camtasia, if you were making videos, I'm gonna show you that now. What you wanna do is you wanna start a new project and then add some media. Oops. Can everyone, I, I'm used to using this again on a, um, on a PC, <laughs> not a Mac, so I'm still getting used to using Camtasia on here and I've got no idea how to add media or import media, here we go. <laughs> so imagine I'm doing a, um, a movie in here, so let's just select one of my little films. Those of you that are on my course will have seen this one probably already. So imagine you've got your movie ready to edit in Camtasia, but you then wanna add a logo. So again, you'd go back to add media import media and then you find your logo wherever you hit it. I'm going to go for the big one because I can always shrink it down. Import and then what you do you just layer it on top like this and then you bring it to the start of your video and then you see it there and then you can shrink the beast and then stick it somewhere like where your background is kind of unobtrusive. Oops. So I might put it there because that's where my back background is the most uh, plain. And then what you want to do in Camtasia is you grab the logo and you pull it right along to the whole length of your movie. This is a bit of a pain in the bum to do. Maybe there's an easier way and I haven't discovered it yet, but this is the way I do it. If anyone's a Camtasia expert out there, please let me know if there's a much better way of doing this because it really is a pain. So you're just going to drag it all along because what that means is it will stay in the frame of the video for the whole length of the video 
So anyway, you don't want to watch me just dragging this. You know what to do, because I've shown you. Just keep dragging until it's got to the end, and then that will mean that your logo sits in your video there. I'm not sure if you can do this in iMovies or Windows Movie Maker. I honestly haven't tried, because one, I haven't haven't taught myself iMovies yet, being brand new to Apple, and two, I don't have my PC anymore because it died, so I can't test it out on Windows Movie Maker. But if anyone wants to have a go, then please go ahead and try it. You can't really go wrong because if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and you haven't lost anything. Um, but there you go, there's how to make transparent imagery in um, PicMonkey, and then how to actually add it on the top of pictures and add it on the top of videos. Okay, so I hope that's been really useful to you. And I look forward to seeing you on the internet. Um, maybe you're part of my course, eCourse e Entrepreneurs. If you're not on that course and you love building eCourses, by all means, buy my course, because it's so awesome. <laughs> and uh, it's really low cost as well. I, I like to keep things affordable for everyone. Um, you can find that on my website, starkashara.com. And also come and join my free mastermind group if you're not in it already. It's in Facebook and it's called No Desk Required. And I'd love to see you there. I do tons of tutorials like this. So there's loads and loads of free value you get from me. Um, anyway, I'll see you soon. I love you guys. Bye.